Okay, Malcolm, ready to start when you are. Thank you. Can you put the volume down on the next? Can I just see if the camera works if I press start? So, welcome everybody. I can see that we now have 176 people in this meeting, which feels like a really good turnout. And before we start with the main part of the event, I'm just going to remind you of a few of the housekeeping notes. We're all way too familiar with the etiquette of virtual meetings, but these large meetings, it's important to remember to keep your cameras and microphones off as much as you can during the, during the ceremony. But we very much want you to turn your cameras on and make some noise and make some fun when your names are called out and at the other appropriate times during the, during the event, which we will signal to you. As you can see from the slide, this is being live streamed on YouTube. Captioning is available throughout the ceremony. Please feel free to use the chat box as much as you like during the ceremony and share photos on Twitter, Instagram with the hashtag BSMS forever for your chance to win 50 pounds. Full details of that are on the events page. Uh, and Matt will be monitoring the chat and hopefully answering your questions. Most of all, I hope you have a wonderful evening uh, both during and after this celebration. So if our staff can just turn on their cameras and wave and greet the students, we'll then get into the formality. So thank you whoever's listening to that. It's rather weird listening to yourself within a few seconds of speaking. <laughs> So thank you for switching that off. So on with the, the most important part of the event in many ways, which is the welcome speech and reading of your names. So my name is Malcolm Reed, and it's my immense privilege to be the Dean of Brighton and Sussex Medical School. And I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to what is now our second digital Okay. informal graduation ceremony. I remember thinking that this version of graduation would be a one-off event last year, but sadly, this has not proved to be the case. And you are therefore the second cohort that we have not been able to share the celebration of your success with in person. Live streaming is not quite the real thing, but we genuinely wish to celebrate your achievements in becoming qualified doctors. Many, many congratulations from all of us at BSMS, and we hope we can invite you back next year for some more formal graduation in person. You are joining the medical workforce in the NHS at an extraordinary time, and the flexibility and commitment that you have already shown since early 2020 has made us all very proud of you. Terms like unprecedented and new normal are already cliches, but we cannot underestimate the impact this pandemic has had on members of the BSMS community, especially those of us who have lost loved ones and friends or whose lives have been so tragically changed beyond recognition. Oh, as a it's, um, it's probably over 100 uh, people graduates. Yeah, yeah. You're joining the ever-expanding community of BSMS alumni who make an outstanding contribution to the care of patients locally, nationally and internationally, and who are increasingly contributing to teaching, research and leadership. All these attributes and the resilience gained during these extremely challenging times have been enormously valuable as we have faced a challenge unlike any I have seen in my 40 years as a doctor. This has been an absolutely extraordinary backdrop to your final two years as BSMS students. And I'm sure the reality, impact and influence of COVID-19 
will continue to shape your experience and practice as doctors in the coming decades. You join an NHS which has demonstrated an amazing ability to adapt to extreme circumstances with innovation, dedication and determination. The relationship with the public at large has been transformed and we will have to see and hope that this leads to long-term improvements in resourcing and structure of the NHS. You have been a superb group of students and it has been a delight to help shape the doctors that you have now become. We wish you the very best in your future careers and genuinely hope that you will stay in touch with us wherever your career takes you in future years. Indeed, I sincerely hope that you will consider making Brighton your ultimate career destination so you can help us contribute to patient care and develop the generations of new doctors that will join you in medical practice. Congratulations to the class of 2021 and good luck to you all. I will now read the names of our graduates of 2021. I will call your names in groups of 10. If you can keep your cameras switched off, but put them on when your name is called. And once each list is read, we will congratulate the group staff and turn on cameras to applaud you. So starting with group one. So Kias Abu Alhawa. Go five. Nakita Ardi. Congratulations, guys. Bye. Kareem Aldea. Well Ahmed El Mukayed. <laughs> Zed Amjad. Benus Odinis. Halima Aways, Katie Baldock, Peter Bannister, Callum James Barnes. So that's our first group of 10. So if you can turn your cameras on, have a good shout, our staff can join you, and then we'll press on. <laughs> So I'll now press on with group two, and if we can try and hold the applause and keep the mics off, together. Together. at that point, them names. Oh, you want to do woo and then woo again? Freya Barry Conlon, Olivia Barton. Yay! Anika Kea Begum. Daniel, Daniel Benham. Pashmina Bhutto. Jack Binding. Georgia Blackwell Green. Filippo <laughs> Pombieri. Melissa Bowen, no. Ebert Brand Schmidt. That's <laughs> well done, Group Two. Group three, Nick Broadwell, Elizabeth Daniel Irving Brown, Max Gregory Bullock, Yay! Adar Butt, <laughs> Richard Camblin, Emily Tatling, Kieran Cave, Joel Chilaka. Go on, Joel, son. We're so proud. 
Chunming Chu and Joshua Christie. Congratulations, Group Three. Oh, Joshua, oh, oh, go! Good job. <laughs> Group four, Jack Clark, Rebecca Clemente, Liam Cole, Helena. Uh, I'll say again, Helena Cook, Freddie Court. John T. Coxon, David Cross, Keegan Kalewis, oh, Moronike De Silva Elima, <laughs> and Lorna Iman Ditta. And that's the end of group four. Congratulations. <laughs> Rachel Emmanuel. Lauren Ems. <laughs> Keen Evans Harvey. <laughs> Mohammed Mohammed Ashik Fasahuddin. <laughs> Madeline Fletcher, Lucy Fortescue, Rebecca Gill, Isabel Gooderham, <laughs> Heidi Grant, and Henry Gray. That's the end of grade group five. Congratulations. <laughs> Sophie Hardy, Holly Harmon, Megan. Harrison, <laughs> Emma Hayward, <laughs> Hannah Hennessy, I'll say again, Hannah Hennessy, <laughs> Emma Hill, Annabelle Holmes. Catherine Hoy, Lewis Isaacs, and Jane Jeter. That's the end of group six. Congratulations. Group seven. Elizabeth Jones, <laughs> Elsie Jones, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rabia Coca, <laughs> Susie <laughs> Lane, <laughs> Isabel. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> she is? Oh, hmm? oh, she was there. 
<laughs> I'm going to name check those last two again because I wasn't sure they got through. Susie Lane. She's here. And Isabel Langdon. <laughs> Charlotte Lawton. Yeah, what are you doing? Oh. Dong Eun Lee. And Eunice Tower. Look, Rob Young. Mubarak Eunice. Sarah McDonald. That's group seven. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> group eight. Mohammed Mali. Arusa Maksud. Yeah. Manahal Mateen. Oh. Yeah. Fergus McCarthy. Yeah. Eleanor McClure. Yay. Yeah. Well done, Ellie. <laughs> Shaylee Mehta. Catherine Merriman. Nice one, Kath. Rachel Morse. Ashwarya Nagasubramoni. And that's the end of Group 8. Congratulations. <laughs> so Group 9. So all your families came up and everyone... <laughs> Group nine, Isabel Faith Norris, Akane Akonju, <laughs> Harry O'Reilly, <laughs> Zayn Osmani. From BBC News. <laughs> Anika Oye. Yay! Congrats. Adime Ravacha. No, no, we're all. Hey, buenas noches. Hey! Banayat Ruvi. Kara Ruddock Ward. We tried to get rid of it. Hey! Jack Beer Corsal. And last in group nine, Philip Shorsha. Congratulations. Group 10. James Scott. So group 10, James Scott, okay. 
Mette un muto. Vai, Shai. Elliot, Shaw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie Shergold. <laughs> James James Shipton. Yeah. <laughs> Eleanor Skinner. <laughs> Laura Summers. Hey, uh, go, Laura. Go, Laura. And Charlie Sony. Joachim Starup Henson. Yeah! Come to Yager. Go Claudius Stibis. And that's the end of group 10. I'm just going to interrupt here because I've seen in the chat that Saad Naveed, I'll just say it more formally. Saad Naveed. Yeah! <laughs> My apologies, Saad. I think it got lost in the noise. So going back now to group 11. Alexander Taylor. Daniel Tebbs. Bethany Thompson. George Thorne. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, George Thorne. Yeah, George. Yeah, George. Go on, George. Go on, George. Nicholas Tolmarsh. Charlotte Tristam. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Ellie Trounce. Ashwarya Vasudevan. <laughs> Apana Valaidan. Yeah. In group 11, Ellie Trance. Isabel Nell Vitti. Congratulations to Group 11. Last but not least, Group 12, Kate Warren. Jordan Watson. Woo! <laughs> Yay! Heather White. Woo! Go on, Heather! <laughs> Woo! Matthew Williams. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, yeah, man. Ricky. We... <laughs> We're so proud. <laughs> I'll say again, Ricky Winchester. Hey! Gemma Wren. And finally, Justina Ruflaska. <laughs> so I invite everyone to switch on your camera. <laughs> well done. <clears throat> We're now going to move forward to, I'm going to introduce, introduce a video speech from Professor Juliet Wright. Unfortunately, Juliet can't be with us this evening but she's kindly recorded this message for you. And we will then move on to Bethany Davis and Micah Coria to present the student prizes. Hello year five, the most enormous congratulations to you all for graduating today. What a year we have all just completed. And I cannot overstate how exceptionally well um, you have weathered such a storm and, and coming through in such style. It, it, it was an amazing Oski performance and we were all very, very proud of you. And massive thanks, uh, particularly from me, but for, for working with us and helping us keep the show on the road um, over the last year. Uh, it, it really has been you know, quite an exceptional team effort. Um, I wish you all the best as you set out on your foundation jobs. You are without doubt uh, more than ready. Uh, I'm really looking forward to working with many of you uh, in geriatrics or medical education. So come back. Uh, please keep in touch and tell us how you're getting on. Um, I hope you have a wonderful evening and uh, the very best of luck to you all. So it gives me great pleasure to um, present the distinctions, uh, which I'll do in two groups. If I could ask all distinction winners to turn on your cameras when your name is called. Uh, so I'll start with the distinctions for the Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery course overall. Olivia Barton, Melissa Bowen, Chun Ming Chu, Keegan Ker Lewis, Sana Iman Ditta, <laughs> Madeline Fletcher, <laughs> Rebecca Gill, Susanna Lane, <laughs> Sophie Lloyd, oh, camera. Vinayak Ravi. <laughs> <laughs> Joachim Starup Hansen, Daniel Tebbs, Jordan Watson, <laughs> and Heather White. <laughs> Everyone, turn your cameras on and applaud this group. Everyone. <laughs> 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 Brilliant, thank you. And so now onto the distinctions in integrated medicine, surgery, therapeutics, and professional studies. Georgia Blackwell Green. Stylistics. The stylistics. Uh, so Elizabeth Brown. So Georgia Blackwell Green. Elizabeth Brown. Oh, Chu. Oh, oh, Ming Chu. Stop it. Didn't it come off? Chun Ming Chu. 
John T. Coxon. Go on, John T. Lambs. <laughs> Keegan Kerr Lewis. <laughs> Madeline Fletcher. <laughs> Holly Harmon. <laughs> Elsie Jones. Dong and Lee. Dong and Lee. Sophie Lloyd. Mana Halmati. Mana Halmati. Fergus McCarthy. Aishwarya Naga Subramoni. <laughs> Isabel Norris. Joachim Star of Hansen. Daniel Tebbs. And Heather White. Cameras and everyone to applaud. I ask you to turn your cameras off, but I'll hand over to Dr. Micah Corrier. Thanks very much, Bethany. Uh, hello, everyone. And uh, so I'm going to proceed with presenting some academic prizes. And congratulations, everyone. Don't forget to switch on your camera when your name is called. So uh, the RCGP Prize for General Practice at BSMS, joint first prize. We've got Jordan Watson Woo! and Pashmina Bhutto. Oh. Woo! Woo! Yes. Woo! Hi, Jordan. So, Sue Epstein Prize for Medical Humanities. Justina Roblowska. I'll repeat that. Sue Epstein Prize for Medical Humanities. Justina Roblowska. We've got the BSMS Prize for the Best Overall Performance in Year 5, Heather White. And we've got we've got the Professor Alistair Smith Prize for the best performance in the program overall, Madeline Fletcher. Yeah! Oh, well, Madge. <laughs> Turn on the camera. Let's applaud them. Yeah! 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm going to continue. I'm going to present the community and sporting prizes. So we've got the BSMS Prize for the most significant contribution to the community, Georgia Blackwell Green. <laughs> BSMS Prize for the best contribution to the student body and university life, Pashmina Bhutto. <laughs> The SMS Prize for Outstanding Personal Achievement, Katie Warren. <laughs> BSMS Sports Award, Laura Summers. <laughs> BSMS Societies Award, Rebecca Gill. <laughs> BSMS Outstanding Service Award. The winners are Helena Cook and Aparna Validen. Great. So I'm now going to hand over to Dr. Andreas Hirsch to continue the presentations. Dear class of 2021, huge congratulations on behalf of the FACE team and the regional subdeans 
education managers and all the clinical co colleagues that have worked with you. You have done us proud and we are looking so forward to working with you now and or at some time in the future. It's a great pleasure to announce basically on your behalf the Top Teacher Awards. Winning teachers are invited to turn on their cameras when their names are read out. Best teacher in year five. Unfortunately, both of them are unable to be here. The runner up is Dr. Jonathan Nipp. And the winner is Professor Juliet Wright. The next award. <laughs> The next award is for the best allied health professional teacher in year five. And the runner up is Cici Mijares, who is the clinical skills simulation nurse at St. Richard's Hospital in Chichester. And the winner are the whole clinical skills team, Helen Flanagan, Maria George, and James Muggleton. <laughs> The best teacher for the entire BMBS course, runner up, Professor Juliet Wright, and the winner, Dr. Michael Corrier. And the award for outstanding support for the learning experience of students. The runners up are Louise Mimna and Liz Kay. And the winners are the Yay! foundation doctors who ran the mock Oskis. Doctors Habit Saad, Annika Patel, <laughs> Manuel Nairuk. <laughs> Zoe Pude Woo! and Sishan Mizia. Woo! So congr congratulations to all the award winners um, and thank you for making the most excellent choices. Thank you. We are now come to the most important event of the whole evening. It's the speech of the class of 2021 and it will be presented by Heather White, Emily Catlin and Rebecca Clementi. I'm Emily, this is Heather and Rebecca. Most of you will know us as the MedSoc fifth year reps who are constantly spamming you with grad ball updates. Sadly um, we've now had two grad balls cancelled and we've been left doing this speech instead. Unlike the fire eaters and the bouncy castle and the crap van this shouldn't be taken away from us. We'd like to start this evening by saying congratulations to the graduating class of 2021. It's been such a difficult year for us all, but we've managed to make it this far and can now call ourselves doctors. So congratulations to everybody who is here this evening. We'd also like to take this opportunity to say a massive thank you to everyone who's helped us. First of all, thank you to everyone who helped us with the speech, as well as a big thank you to the entire grad ball committee who worked tirelessly to create a ball that never ended up happening. We'd also like to say thank you from all of the students to our family, friends and staff who have helped get us here along the way. Thank you so much. Now let us take you back to many years ago as we talk you through med school highs and lows. Champagne reception where we first did meet our friends like Cara, Sophie and Pete. An interesting week was had by all especially in paddocks and Lewis Court Halls. Lectures, tutorials, DR and essays, which we struggled through with fatigue and malaise. We sold our souls to the campus shop. We love and hate you, the UK's most expensive co-op. A year was by and back we all were, greeting new medic kids in the med school for year. 
Some families were closer than others, fathers, brothers, daughters, and mothers. By the end of year two, we had outgrown the campus, packed up for Camptown like Jaunty and Gus. As we entered phase two, we couldn't prepare for the clinics and ward rounds and the surgeons who'd tear us a new one. Wandering the wards like clueless lost sheep, dreading the day we had our own bleep. Many hours in camp down, scratching our head, working hard like Adar and Ed. For intercalation, two years became one. The cream of the crop, the class of 2021. A marathon fourth years, 40 weeks long, cut short by Rona, but we all powered along. It lasted longer than the eye clinics felt. A bad hand of cards we had all been dealt. We dodged a whole OSCE, but str struggled on teams. Fifth year would be better, or so it would seem. In our final year of uni, Far away we were sent. We packed up our stethoscope and away we went. Hospital accommodation was not as it seemed. And along came another lockdown and we all screamed. In Chichester, an alcohol ban and rats we got. Eastbourne and Hastings were left to rot. Worthing is good if you love a commute every day. In Red Hill, from the world you felt far away. Next was finals. Hours crying we spent, followed by elective, unpaid labor they meant. A couple of months of our own personal hell, only saved by our friends like Zane and Nell. We never thought we were gamblers, but how we were fools. The SJT randomizer sent us all to Blackpool. Other than nerding and geeking and books, we've raised money for charity, done sports, and been cooks. On the ski trip, we learned how to carve up the slopes. We made friends across years, but our knees barely coped. Patterns, revenge, walkabout, and the haunt. Dressing up, dressing down, our dance moves we did flaunt. Now, we have taken you to first year and back. It's time to thank a few who have kept us on track. In anatomy lectures, we met Andrew Dilly, who taught us the medical word for a... Tummy! <laughs> Prof Smith, Catherine Hennessy and Anatomy Squad taught us all that we needed to know about the human body. In phase one and two, we relied on Liz Kay, always there for a chat, a true phase one day. Immunity in phase one with our hero, Mike Tarzi. We can't wait to see you at a graduation party. We will never forget the lectures from Doc Harry Witch. It's time you knew your mingering slides were a brilliant read. And then when we moved on to years three, four and five, only the clinical skills team could keep us alive. To get us through finals was our true light. The one and the only Prof Juliet Wright. Dr. Micah Corey was there as the BNF whiz. He made sure we knew everything in the biz. And now to the legend that is Dr. Tim Chevy. Here's to seeing you at the reunion along with a bevy. Louise, we haven't forgotten how you run the show. We all applaud you. You truly are a pro. For our A&E teaching and advice for the job, just don't be an a, a direct quote from Rob. Max Cooper and the wonderful GP crew. You got us to the Oski and Katie's. Whew. Andreas Hirscher, boss man of year five. We hope you're here to hear our thanks live. Student support and the school office team for putting up with us. We want to thank you. Finally, of course, Malcolm Reed, the Dean. You truly are one cool bean. Jokes aside, we want to thank you all for your support and guidance. It's been a ball. Not a real one though. Thanks, COVID. So our time is up. Get in your cars. Gather your stuff and move afar. Just remember the key messages BSMS said. Always ice the patient. 
and stay right of the bed. The patient is awful, still say thanks for their time, then go home, rest your head with a glass of red wine. We'll miss you all, it's been a blast. However, it's time to make money at last. COVID may have taken our social lives and our ball, but still be proud, we made it. Thanks to you all. Congratulations, class of 2021. Have a fantastic time celebrating this evening. And good night. And cheers. Good night. Kyla! Hey, good night. Emily and Rebecca. Mabruk, everybody. Mabruk, Mabruk. Good luck, everyone. Allah ya barik fiki, Amma. Fadlu, fadlu, Amma sawa, Adar alheir. Fadlu. I will ask you to. Congratulations, Ashik. Congratulations, Rachel, and everyone. Thank you. Emily and Rebecca and everyone who contributed to that video, thank you so much. I thought it was wonderful. It is really sad that we cannot meet and that we cannot meet as we would have liked to have done. It feels like we came so close but didn't quite make it this year. And I, I really hope that we can offer some kind of get together back here in Brighton for you all in a year or so's time. Um, I'm, it's now my pleasure to introduce someone who was quite deservedly mentioned in your video. And that, of course, is the legend that is Dr. Rob Galloway. Um, you all know him for his amazing enthusiasm and commitment to, to teaching you as students and ensuring that you progress and become doctors. But over the last year or 18 months, he has had a huge impact locally in the hospital in the response to COVID. He's made major transformations in the way that staffing is structured, such that we've had a number of teaching fellows, many of whom you will have met and who have been involved in delivering your clinical teaching in the last year. And most importantly, from my perspective, Rob Galloway is a huge ally and friend of BSMS with amazing commitment on everything that he does. Uh, he is the classic example of the 120 percenter in absolutely everything. So it's a great pleasure to welcome Rob to give your welcome to the NHS speech for this year. Rob, over to you. Thank you very much. Um, looking back, who would have thought in the last five or six years we'd have come this far? And it's been hard, but we've got there, nearly. So many jokes, so many sneers, and all those so-so nears. They wear you down through the years, but never stops you dreaming. And Jules Wright still gleaming. And we got to our first final in 55 years. But enough of the football. I want to talk about the class of 21. And congratulations to you all. You deserve such a round of applause. Of all the unimportant things in life, I would argue that football is the most important. But what you've all achieved is far, far more important than football. Even if on Sunday night, a little bit intoxicated, I disagreed. Football may have so very nearly came home that you are actually coming home. Coming home to your parents, friends and loved ones. But now you're coming home as doctors. From where you left and in the circumstances that you had to study in, that's the most amazing of achievements. Congratulations. You should be so, so proud of yourselves. But also grateful. Grateful to the people who made it possible 
for you to achieve this great accolade, your loved ones. They have supported you through the good and the bad times, and they deserve as much congratulations as you do. So congratulations to you all on this amazing achievement of becoming a doctor. I genuinely believe being a doctor is one of the greatest privileges anyone could have. But I believe that being an NHS doctor makes that honour greater still, more so in 2021 than any time since it was formed 73 years ago. In July 1948, every household received a letter to explain the creation of the NHS. It stated, it prov provides you with all medical, dental and nursing care. Everyone, rich or poor, man, woman or child can use any part of it. There are no insurance qualifications, but it's not a charity. You are all paying for it, mainly as taxpayers, and it will relieve your money worries in times of illness. The nation rejoiced as the realization hit and it became apparent that no longer should people ever die because of their lack of wealth. On 5th of July, 1948, the keys to Park Hospital in Trafford, Manchester, were symbolically handed over to Nye Bevan, who took them on behalf of the country. There's a public round of applause and a guard of honor as the nurses and doctors walked into work on the first day as NHS employees. The first patient through the door was a 13 year old girl named Sylvia Beckenham, who was admitted for a serious liver condition. She came from a working class background and her family could not afford the care she needed. Without the NHS, she would have died. With it, she survived and went on to live an amazing full life as a teacher, mum, and all accounts an amazing Kenner player. She epitomizes the NHS long and great history. In the last 73 years, infant mortality has fallen from 36 per thousand births to less than four. Life expectancy has grown from men from 65 to 80 years and from women from 70 to 84. But the way we deliver care has changed. When NHS was set up, there were 480,000 beds, now just 120,000. Much more care, rightly, is done in the community with GPs leading the way. Although things have been, per have been far from perfect in the NHS, it's always been resilient to the pressures thrown upon it, never more so than now. It seems like a different world from one a year and a half ago when we first started hearing about a virus from China. So much has changed. But one thing that is no different is the dedication and devotion of the staff who work in the NHS. The NHS is not its buildings, its drugs or its machines, it's its staff. And you are part of that family now. You join an institution whose ethos puts patients above us all else. An institution which leads the world in research, cutting edge care, but most importantly, humanity. You may think you're just a small cog in a massive machine, but as a junior doctor, you're not. You are the oil that makes that machine turn. You are the one that makes sure your patient gets the correct care. And if they don't, you're the one who has duty to make sure the NHS learns from its mistakes. You're the one who explains to the patient what is happening to them and whose smile gives more comfort than injection of morphine. Even though nowadays the smile is going to be seen above our, um, our masks and you can only see the upturned eyes. And you're the one who holds the patient's hand with gloves on nowadays whilst breaking bad news. You've not just been learning the science of medicine, but the art. But the art is the hardest thing to perfect. It's not something which can be found in a textbook and never will be replaced by a computer algorithm. But as you spend time with patients, and more time with patients, make sure you reflect and fine tune that art as it's, patient, as it's only patients who can teach you that skill. Learn what really is meant when they say yes to the question, have you understood? Learn what really may mean when they say no to the question, have you got any more questions? Remember, it's how you make your patients feel that, that affects their outcomes as much as the drugs you give or the operations you perform. We, go, we all go into medicine wanting to be the best possible doctor. Key to success is simple as collaborating, being nice and working hard. You must be prepared to work hard and learn anew. You may no longer be medical students, but you'll always be students of medicine. 50% of what we've taught you is wrong and only by lifelong learning will we know which 50% that is. And as coronavirus has shown us, new and unexpected things will become the most important thing in the world. And being prepared to always learn anew and understand how to appraise evidence will be crucial to the future. And use best available evidence. Be that randomised control studies, for example, for steroids, for COVID. Or be they that observational studies for masks and transmission. But the ultimate key to success is looking after yourself and knowing when you need help. It's a sign of strength and not a sign of weakness. In September last year, I was exhausted. I'd worked flat out trying to manage the COVID workforce crisis and was burnt out. I went to see my first patient the day and started to get panicky about a simple ankle injury I've looked after for 20 years. 
I started to panic, to panic if they need an X-ray or not. I had to apologise and leave. I went to the office and just cried and cried and cried. I couldn't do it. I needed a break. I had a few days off to reflect, heal and get my mojo back. And I'm fine now. Still combining a &E with managing medical and a &E workforce. But I needed that time off and I needed to admit that I was burnt out. My point is, if it can happen to me, somebody's done this job for 20 years, it can happen to you. You need to look after yourselves for, the, for your sake and your patient's sake. But please, however hard things are, try and be proud of being a doctor and proud of working for the NHS. It's not a given the NHS is here to stay. It's not cheap, but it's money well spent. It's ethos of doing what's right for patients rather than profit means tests are done when they will change management rather than when they allow profits to be maximised. This means it's the most efficient health service in the world, even though it doesn't feel like that at times. Yes, it needs reform, but in a way which encapsulates all it stands for. But it also needs support and love. Support it as a best friend would do, with honest and reflective love and not unfettered adulation, because only then can it reform and grow in the way our nation truly needs it. But the best way you can support it is when you're at work and by your actions, by making your patients know that they are central to everything you do. Because that's why you join medical school. Go back and read the UK statement and never forget it. You've now achieved that dream that you first wrote down all those years ago. You want to combine your love of science with a love of helping people, and now you can. So go enjoy the journey of your career and not just the destination, but never forget your moral compass. For mine, as a non-religious man, it's found a statement in the Torah, the ultimate in the Quran. Whoever saves life one person, saves the world entire. That's what's guided me and will continue to do so as I continue my life as a doctor and as a student of medicine. Thank you for being brilliant students. Thank you in advance for being brilliant doctors. And thank you for your future service to the NHS. Good luck. And please remember to call me in a couple of years when you want a clinical fellow job. Thank you very much. And congratulations, class of 21. Congratulations. As we come to the close of our ceremony this evening, we say thank you to Rob for an inspiring talk. And it leads us nicely into joining together, turning all of all of us, turning our cameras on as we listen to and in in with faculty. One second. We're saying the oath. The BSMS version of the Hippocratic Oath. So I'll ask my colleagues in the comms team to share that video and feel free to join in with your cameras on and your microphones on or off and we'll now let the video run. I solemnly promise to serve humanity, caring for the sick, promoting good health and alleviating pain and suffering to the best of my ability. I will practice medicine with integrity, humility, honesty and compassion, working with my colleagues to meet the needs of patients. With this profession comes considerable responsibility. I will not abuse my position and will act in a professional manner for I will ensure that age, gender, race, religion, political affiliation, sexual orientation, nationality, or social standing will not influence my duty of care. I will respect patients' families, beliefs, and whether or not they get into my own. I will strive to assist my patients by making informed decisions. Oh. I will never abuse the trust of the other doctor. I will seek constantly to improve my medical knowledge or skills whilst recognizing the limits of my own ability. I recognise the importance of sharing my expertise with colleagues and students to provide the best education care. I have chosen to make this declaration and I will provide it. Congratulations, Year 5. Absolutely. Best of luck as F1. Yeah.
شكرا الله يبارك فيك عمو Well done, well done everyone. Congratulations. Congratulations everybody. Couldn't be prouder. Well done. Congratulations. 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 <laughs> 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 such a brilliant event together. Congratulations to everyone.
So, final word, well done everyone. Many, many congratulations. Stay in touch with BSMS and remember your times with us. We will always want to hear from you. We'll always want to see you again. And I hope you have the best possible evening that you can. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. We love you, Malcolm. We do. We love you, Malcolm. We do. We love you, Malcolm. We do. Oh, my God. I love you. Congratulations, Lizzie! Yay! Yay!